take your questions. This morning I have the pleasure of introducing one of Detroit's most influential business leaders, a key contributor to Detroit's resurgence and also a member of the Chamber's Board of Directors. Tim Bryan is founder of Galaxy Solutions and has served as the company's chairman and CEO since 2000. His leadership has been pivotal in growing Galaxy Solutions from a computer software consultant to an industry leading custom software development and IT business service. Galaxy truly is a global company that could locate anywhere in the world. The decision to come to Detroit a few years ago gave the city a much needed boost. Since then, Tim has been a great ambassador to the city. Showcasing Detroit as a great place to do business, the architect behind the well-known Outsource to Detroit campaign that promotes job creation in Detroit, and also Love Detroit, which promotes quality of life in place. The Outsource to Detroit campaign positions Detroit as a viable alternative for creating the next generation of high-level IT jobs in Detroit instead of outsourcing them. This past January, Tim was invited by President Obama to the White House to participate in an Insourcing American Jobs Forum, where he spoke and introduced the president. In the forum, Brian explained how onshoring in Detroit helps ensure cost and, importantly, quality benefits and innovation while growing job opportunities in the United States. Tim and Galaxy Solutions continue to have a positive impact on the region, and the Chamber is proud to have them call Detroit home. We are lucky to have Tim join us this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the Chairman and CEO of Galaxy Solutions, Tim Bryan. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's, it's wonderful to be here. Um, just to start with a, a, a personal note, uh, I love being in Detroit. And that's, you know, thematically is an important starting point just to say uh, this is a fantastic place to be personally and business-wise. So before the presentation starts and we, we get into the necessarily limited uh, presentation about what goes on in my mind, um, <laughs> that, that I, I want to share with you uh, that in, in, in spite of all the challenges that the city has faced and is facing, um, it, it, this is a, a phenomenal place to be and we love doing business here and we are uh, very committed to Detroit. So let's just start off with that. The um, presentation is going to go uh, down with uh, seven key areas uh, that, that I intend to cover uh, in various degrees of, uh, of brevity. Uh, but, uh, but the idea here is to share uh, whatever thoughts I may have on, on some of these um, topics and just give you some insight. Uh, and if, if it proves to be useful, that's wonderful. Uh, I think, you know, uh, the, the, the CEO mind is a, is, a, is a straight line in a certain respect. You know, it's, it's got to be almost a punchline for a joke, but um, you know, we thought we'd uh, give you a little insight into what a CEO mind actually <laughs> looks like. Uh, now, it, uh, on its face, this looks like you know, pinball and all of that, but if you'll notice, there are, there are probably 10 or 12 balls circulating in this thing. And so while it is tongue in cheek, it also gives uh, uh, the correct impression that most CEOs are uh, managing all kinds of uh, ideas, thoughts, uh, operational issues, strategic issues, et cetera, et cetera. And um, this graphic ain't far off, as they say. So um, decent representation. So. Um, Starting off with identifying and selecting strategic opportunities, um, information gathering uh, is, is something I want to spend a couple of minutes on. I boil this down into, into a very simple uh, fashion of talking to people and uh, reading and all the other uh, areas where uh, gathering information is possible. Um, it, it may sound mundane, but talking to customers uh, and, and speaking with them about what their goals are and trying to understand how to translate um, what their needs are into services and products that will address those needs. And it starts with, uh, with uh, you know, gathering information from customers, from employees, 
uh, and from uh, the, the, the popular media, uh, and trying to, um, trying to identify and be in touch with market trends. What's going to happen? What does the future hold? Uh, how are you positioned to capitalize on uh, what, what those opportunities might be? And, uh, and for me, um, I end up trying to look at what's going on, and I see things going on in different areas, and I, I look for points of connection. I try to say to myself, okay, well, this is going on over here, this is going on over here. Is there a relationship between those things? Is there a way to put these things together? Um, our being here in Detroit, which we can talk about perhaps uh, in a couple of minutes, is exactly that type of a process where uh, certain business drivers uh, were um, requiring us to do more work inside the United States and look for uh, a cost-effective uh, geographic location to do that work. So these things are spinning around, and I look at uh, a major part of my job is to take those things and look and see how they can be put together. And that is, uh, you know, that, that's, I think there's a lot of value to that. Um, when Galaxy started, we've been in business now since 1990, uh, and um, it was founded in uh, my 300 square foot uh, studio apartment in New York City. So the, the image I'll give you is uh, my bed, a desk, and a fax machine on my nightstand. Uh, which used to go off in the middle of the night, and not being a great sleeper anyway, you can imagine when facts start coming through at you know three in the morning, and that's it, you're up for the rest of the day. But um, the case study that I want to review um, as a as a, uh, a a good example of uh, of how strategy uh, can be applied is in the pharmacy benefits management space. That is um, that's a business where uh, the dispensation of pharmaceuticals prescriptions uh, is managed by a third party, and they make their money uh, by doing things in bulk, by driving down costs through use of generics, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the business uh, was in its infancy in the early 90s. So when Galaxy was in its infancy, the PBM industry was in its infancy. And um, uh, uh, kind of a, uh, a fun little story is I was in, I was in that 300-square-foot uh, apartment uh, looking for clients, and uh, there was a, um, I, I would go through the newspaper to see who was advertising, and I saw an advertisement for New Jersey, of, in Fairlawn, New Jersey, a company called Medco Containment Services. I had never heard of them before. And so I was looking at the ad, and you know, as, as any reasonably young entrepreneur is saying, okay, how am I gonna make this work? I looked at the ad, Medco Containment Services in Fairlawn, New Jersey, and I said, well, this is what it's come to. This is a hazardous waste disposal company, and I'm going to be going into the hazardous waste business. So uh, it was not a hazardous waste company. It was a brand new company uh, in a brand new field called Pharmacy Benefits Management, uh, Medco Medical Cost Containment Services is where the name came from. And uh, Medco uh, was uh, purchased a little over a year ago uh, by Express Scripts, and it, uh, it is now a hundred billion dollar uh, company that we've been uh, supporting for uh, 20 years. So um, what's interesting about this is that this new business, uh, this new business applied technology in, uh, in a very unique fashion in terms of uh, trying to reduce cost and improve the clinical outcomes in, in healthcare, which uh, in 1990 was a big deal, and it's an even bigger deal now. If you think about what's going on in, in, in healthcare, the idea of keeping people well and saving money is, uh, is a wonderful place to be. And what we, um, what we understood very early on was that Medco at that time, Express Scripts today, was extremely progressive technically. They were on the forefront of using, <clears throat> using systems to accomplish their business goals in ways that we hadn't seen with other customers. And so um, we understood strategically that what we were going to do and what we were going to learn from this customer would be applicable to other businesses inside of healthcare and outside of healthcare that what they were dealing with in terms of um, transaction volumes, security requirements, 
uh, regulatory requirements were unique and progressive, and that if we were good in, in supporting them, we would be good with other customers. So as a firm and as a CEO, I said, hey, this is a good place to be. Um, we, you know, we could, we could uh, hitch our wagon to, uh, you know, businesses that might be a little, uh, a little more um, threatened. You know, we could, we could have uh, been with, you know, telephone operators or copper wire manufacturers. But you know what? The, the prospects there were not as good as being with a healthcare entity uh, that uh, was determined to uh, reduce cost and uh, improve clinical outcomes. So, so it made a ton of sense for us as an organization uh, to do everything we could uh, to support that entity. And we did, and we have, and we've grown with them. Uh, and at this point, we are, uh, if, you, if you think about the number of uh, healthcare transactions, prescriptions that are written in the United States, Galaxy Systems, uh, that is to say the systems that we've built support around 75% of the transactions in the United States. Uh, in the PBM industry. Uh, we, um, and we're talking transaction volumes of around 40 million transactions per day. So if you think about that, you think about the volumes involved, and you think about the risks, because we're talking about healthcare, we're talking about prescriptions, we're talking about people and their well-being, uh, you understand that the complexity of these systems and the necessity that they run properly uh, if you can do that in that environment, then you've got a pretty good business. So that was the, the bet that we placed among others in 1990, and it's, it's paid off nicely for us. We'll talk a little bit about uh, business building strategies and tactics. Um, you, you can see we selected some footage of uh, Ali and Frazier um, because uh, one of the things that, that uh, I want to highlight is the idea of uh, using competitive energy to improve. And when you talk about um, your, your um, competitors and you talk about your customers, your employees, what, what you want is an environment in which you, are, you, you compel yourself to do better. Ali and Frazier, well, they fought, right? They fought each other. They tried to beat each other. Uh, what was going on there, though? They were actually improving one another. That competition... Uh, uh, was driving a better product, okay? The, the spectacle of Ali Frazier uh, in, in roughly 19, I'd say 1971 or something like that, was, was uh, unbelievable. I mean, it captured the world, et cetera, et cetera. And these two men were warriors, and they drove each other. In a similar way, you, you see that with, like, um, um, uh, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird people that competed but created a better product. Now, if you're talking about a business, you're talking about finding a customer that drives you to be better. You're talking about uh, you know, hiring employees that challenge you to, to do things better. And the idea here is that that, that creative tension, if you will, of, of servicing uh, a, an enlightened customer, of reacting to employees that have choices about where they work, uh, then you're talking about something that's inspiring. So at Galaxy, um, first and foremost, we have a culture of meritocracy. We, people succeed based on what they accomplish. If you do well, you will move up in the organization. The, the, it is the merit of the work that you do that we are focused on. Uh, there could be other factors in other uh, companies. You know, you, you're related to the founder or you know, you're good looking or whatever it might be. But at Galaxy, you, you advance uh, based on the work that you do. Empowerment is key, uh, and empowerment means, uh, at least as far as the CEO is concerned, is listening and understanding uh, and, and really um, putting together with, uh, with your teams uh, uh, strategies that, that, that will drive the business, make it grow, and, and in fact, empower people uh, to, to take responsibility for what goes on in the company. That empowerment element is, is, is very key. Uh, and I, I think it's important also, if you think about um, my career as someone that sat alone in the room to start the company and then uh, it's grown to, to where we have it now, uh, empowering others and giving them responsibility um, is, is critical. 
uh, because without that, you, you know, your growth is necessarily limited. Partnering with customers, as I mentioned, is, is, um, is very important. Our customers are enlightened. They understand that our success and their success are intimately intertwined. And, um, uh, you know, in, in certain segments of the IT industry, blaming the consulting firm is a sport. Uh, and, and what happens is, you know, you're called in to do something and the, you know, the, the in, income, incumbent workforce says, hey, I don't want these guys in here. Or, uh, you know, we want to do this ourselves, whatever it may be. Uh, our customers said to their employees, if, if this consulting firm fails, you fail. Your interests and their interests and our interests are all aligned. And you talk about enlightenment. That basically says there is no us and them. We're one team. We've hired these people to be successful, meaning Galaxy, uh, and they need to be successful. If they're not successful, you're not successful. That's a great client to have. That is a, that's a client that understands uh, that, that we're all in this together and uh, we need to um, be successful and emphasizes that to their employees. Also spending a minute on geography. In the PBM industry and in all industries about 10 or 15 years ago, uh, there was a, um, um, a rush to move offshore. And that was based on price, based on the commodity, uh, and the idea that uh, technological work could be done offshore. Um, Galaxy is in something like six countries uh, with a major footprint in India. Uh, and our coming here to Detroit uh, is, is based on the same principles as why we went to India, why we went to China, et cetera. There are business reasons for being here, that we can improve our service of our customers in being here, just as we could in, in being uh, in, uh, in the Far East and the Near East. So the point here is, though, that we have uh, set up operations in, in parts of the world that help us compete, help us provide service to our customers, and, uh, and help us to deliver uh, the quality that our customers are looking at with uh, the uh, price points that make sense to them. Talk for a second about core competencies. Um, you'll notice the high jumper. I think he was selected because he and I both wear black socks with gym shorts. <laughs> And I think our, our AV department it recognizes the inherent humor in that. Um, it's important to highlight what you do better than anyone else and to know what you do better than anyone else. It's a key to understanding your business and building upon that, especially in a growing organization. Differentiating in the marketplace. Galaxy competes uh, with Accenture, IBM, Cognizant, um, those, those level firms. Um, in, in our customer si situation, uh, the, the next largest firm from Galaxy, in other words, the smallest of our competitors, is around $7 billion in revenue, okay? We're talking about big boys, all right? We're talking about, uh, um, you know, people, companies that have, are, are very competitive, uh, and uh, have a lot of resources to draw on. And yet, there we are, okay? We're in this because we've differentiated ourselves. What do our customers say? They say, you do what uh, you've promised. And in, in the IT services space, that is, um, that is a major differentiator and something that we're quite proud of. Uh, and, and that means also that we're delivering to them what makes sense for them as customers, as opposed to running a play that's good for us to increase billing or do something else that, that may uh, in the short term uh, benefit our firm, but in the long term may damage our relationship. And we're seeing with competitors, uh, in a lot of situations, these major competitors are starting to have uh, challenges, major challenges in terms of their being able to deliver on their promises. So the, di the differentiator of, being of, of a firm that uh, will actually deliver on what it promises is, is no small thing. Uh, beyond that, uh, and we'll talk in just a moment, a couple of our, uh, our, our offerings are so unique and so productive in the marketplace. 
uh, that we're known for highly complex work that fills a market niche that is uh, a major opportunity in, in today's world. Building around practices and people. Uh, we talked a moment ago about uh, uh, empowerment. Uh, our key practices and our key people and, the, and the, the fact that people have the opportunity to excel in this com uh, company, to move up, is no small thing. Um, if, uh, again, it, it, the, what rattles around in, in my brain is that we need to do things to give people responsibility. And I, I want to say also, um, that includes um, dealing with uh, failure uh, if things don't go exactly right. I mean, our organization is one where we make mistakes. We make mistakes as individuals, we make mistakes as firms, and the, and the big responsibility there is to learn from it and not do it again. Uh, understand what the challenges are and move forward, uh, move forward and adjust to what the situation is or was, uh, as opposed to, you know, one mistake and you're out kind of a uh, um, mindset. We want the organization to have confidence. When I, when I mention to you about who we compete with and I tell you uh, the magnitude of our footprint in the United States, um, it's important for me as the CEO uh, to make sure that every member of our organization shares that confidence, shares that knowledge of how, of how we're doing. I spend a lot of time traveling, meeting with our teams, talking with them about where we are and what we're doing. Because organizational confidence, knowing that what we're doing is actually um, you know, being uh, heralded and celebrated in some of the largest corporations in America is, is a big deal. And yet, uh, you have to be careful in an organization that uh, message gets lost. Somebody says, "Yeah, oh, really? I didn't know we were doing that. I didn't know this good thing was happening. Uh, and, and we miss out on an opportunity for the organization to, to actually have that kind of confidence, which feeds on itself. And momentum is a, is a byproduct of that. Uh, you know, the, the growth that we've undertaken, uh, the accomplishments that we've made, uh, uh, all lead to momentum, and we want to keep that momentum going. That will also um, lead us to another area, which is innovation. Uh, if we think about the world that we're in right now, uh, where we've come over the last 10 or 15 years, uh, having um, a, a healthy respect for the need to innovate uh, on behalf of the customer, on behalf of uh, systems that we, we may have internally is critical. We're a generation of people and the next generation are growing up with technology that is unprecedented. If we, if we ask ourselves where are we going to be 20 years from now? How are we going to service a marketplace 20 years from now with the children of today that are growing up almost exclusively with electronic interaction? They are doing things in ways that I didn't do. I mean I go back prior to there being a fax machine. All right? I remember when fax machines came out. Uh, you know, and so that was, how do you transmit a piece of paper? Okay? These days, obviously, uh, the children are on highly sophisticated um, interaction with everyone through, uh, through mobile devices and the internet. The future is going to be, how do we build, uh, build interaction? How do we support that level of understanding of technology? And the answer is that innovation is going to be key to that. And so inside of our company, we have to ask ourselves, are we positioned to support the applications of tomorrow? And, and answering that question also helps us support the applications of today. Because today is, is such a rapidly uh, changing environment in terms of the, of the use of technology. 